Hi folks, Forrest Day Jr. here. Today on Rolling Tape, we have Mark Pyle, and he's gonna talk about Paramount's new guidelines for Star Trek fan films and how they may affect other fan films. Let's roll tape. This episode brought to you by Spoof Dance Film Festival. Make parody commercials and bring the funny. Welcome to the show, Marks. Uh, thanks for having me on. All right, let's talk briefly about uh, Star Trek fan films and what they are, how they're made, all of that good stuff. Sure, sure, sure. Um, so there's a lot of different Star Trek fan films that have been around for a while. Um, for example, since the internet has been around, about uh, 2004, I know Star Trek New Voyages has been on. I guess I should say that I um, I worked on Star Trek New Voyages Phase 2 for a couple episodes, and I also worked on a Batman fan film that you can't really find right now. <laughs> so I have some experience with fan productions. So it's a really uh, cool and, and growing trend as, as film equipment gets cheaper. Um, and there's Star Trek, Star Wars, Doctor Who, Batman, Lord of the Rings, Fire, Firefly, and many more out there. Um, so I think what's in the news a lot right now about Star Trek fan films is that uh, there's been there's been a lawsuit that was put up against one of them called Axanar, and uh, which is still going on, I'm pretty sure. And that has caused a lot of um, a lot of discussions back and forth, uh, leading to Paramount and CBS releasing uh, sort of uh, guidelines for what they call guidelines for avoiding objections. Star Trek or Paramount says that part of it, the two major things that they were having problems with. One is that they didn't like um, that they were selling merchandise, for example, and merchandise for their fan productions and such. And they didn't like that there were a number of talents from Star Trek both in front of and behind the camera that were starting to work on these productions. It's starting to really blur that line between uh, fan production and, and professional production. So, um, you know, I can understand that. And they released these guidelines. There's been a lot of, some people are really upset. Some people are kind of understanding. It's going to be interesting to see how it shapes things moving forward. I, I understand that now. Um, you, you know, they do own the property, the, the, the rights to these Star Trek films. I, and I read the rules, and there was one that uh, struck me that it can only be, I, th I believe it's 15 minutes long at the most. Why would they put a, a time limit on something like this? <laughs> yeah, so there's a couple of them that I'm kind of I'm kind of puzzled by myself. Um, that first one, which is uh, it's like uh, it's got to be less than 15 minutes for a single self-contained story, and no more than two segments or episodes that can't exceed 30 minutes total. So they're really they're trying to make it to where you can't do um, basically you can't do a one-hour episode of, of a show, and you can't or you can't do a feature film. So I don't know if that's why they're doing it that way so they can't compete straight up with their own their own shows and movies um i'm not sure exactly why it's also a little vagueish about like uh, it almost sounds like they're trying to completely kill off series um but i've heard people t say that well if you don't use the name in there there's ways around that maybe i don't know we'll see <laughs> uh, there's always a loophole you, you know that um but uh there was a, a cap on how much you can raise for a fan film. Do you see this uh, moving into other fan films uh, aside from Star Trek? I can see it doing that. I know Star Wars has guidelines out there. Um, I think we'll see what happens. I can see Batman doing that because there's a lot of Batman fan films or Batman related ones. Um, and there have been some takedown notices that have, that have come out, especially with Kickstarters. So they maybe they should do a guidelines. I don't know, but um, I can see it spreading to a few of the more popular ones like that, potentially. Okay, let's talk about some of the Star Wars, I mean, uh, some of the Star Trek fan films that are out there, because personally, I don't know them. Uh, I grew up in, uh, you know, with the original series, and then I kind of, I was never a Trekkie, and I never really followed the series. But can you talk a little bit about how they've uh, gone from the main series to all these fan films? Sure. So uh, a lot of them deal with the original Star Trek series, either before or soon after. Um, so, for example, Star Trek New Voyages, or, or also called Phase Two, it's basically Star Trek, like the missing years, like after 
the, the series ended and before the movies started and kind of continued going on. They introduced some new characters. They, they introduced certain elements from the animated series. I don't know if you remember that. Mm -hmm. um, and play around with, with some of those storylines. And they're set up like pretty much like one hour episodes. Uh, and they've had people guest star that were a prof professional or previous Star Trek actors and stuff, which were really great. Um, so there's Star Trek Renegades. I think that was one of the ones that really started to perk people's attention uh, because they raised a lot of money. They raised like an episode one, they raised over 240,000. Episode two and three that they did a Kickstarter for raised over $378,000. I also had Tim Russ involved, who was Tuvok on Voyager. Uh, Gary Graham again, who's from Enterprise. Robert Picardo from Voyager. Uh, Ethan Phillips from Voyager. A bunch of other Star Trek actors and, and talent. And I think they, that that was one of the first ones that maybe start making people go, hmm, what's going on here? <laughs> um, and that's sort of an edgier type series uh, that's out there uh, for Star Trek. And uh, Star Trek Continues is another one that continues the series. Uh, different different group of people doing that one. It's, it's well done also. Uh, Star Trek Hidden Frontier. There's a bunch of them out there. Oh, I guess so. I didn't. I didn't even realize. All the Star Trek fans are going, you know, oh, idiot. How can you not know this? But I, oh, I'm sorry. Um, I, I, I didn't realize how big this has gotten, and in these numbers here, you know, three hundred seventy-five thousand dollars for a fan film. That's that amazes me. That blows me away. But it also uh, shows me uh, how popular these storylines are. Mm -hmm. For sure, they're very popular. I think, um, you know, they deal with stuff that that the normal Star Trek isn't really dealing with, especially now that J.J. Abrams uh, did the movies, they've kind of gone in a different direction. So there's a, a bunch of fans who really liked the, the feel of the original series that feel kind of abandoned a little bit. And, and these kind of uh, appeal to them, especially um, to, to kind of continue, you know, what they really like about Star Trek. I think that's why it really grew. And I think, um, so whenever I worked on Star Trek New Voyages, it was a really great experience as, as a filmmaker because it was like, so like almost like a history lesson in a way of, of television, because they had built the sets of the Enterprise uh, from the blueprints. So uh, it was like almost stepping into a time machine and going back. <laughs> and, uh, and we had to, of course, study the episodes really with a more keen eye to how they shot it. And, um, uh, and some of the costumes and props that were involved, they were actually borrowed from from uh, costume uh, um, shops or rental places that, that actually had the original versions used back in, in uh, old, uh, original Star Trek series. So it was really cool. It was like touching history. And I could definitely, uh, I knew about Star Trek fan series before. I, I appreciated them and liked them. But after I was done, it was, it was uh, really eye-opening and really a cool experience. All right, well, thanks for the information, Marks. If somebody wants to talk to you about Star Trek or talk to you about how little I know about it, uh, how can they get a hold of you? <laughs> um, I'm over at markspile.com. Uh, you can also, if you want to check out different fan films out there, uh, I know one place, one easy place to go is fanfilms.net. You can find a, a huge list of, of different productions out there. All right, Marks, thanks for joining me. All right, thank you.